Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast. I'm O'Connor Whiteley, bringing you psychology news, articles and other interesting psychology related articles. You are welcome to find the podcast notes and more interesting psychology related things and you can get your free 8 psychology book box set at connorwhitely.net. Now let's get on to the show. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 51 of the Psychology World Podcast with me Con Wiley and today's episode is on tips to build a psychological resilience. So moving on to the psychology news section, we'll be reading from the British Psychological Society Research Digest and there's some actually some really really good articles. When we follow orders to hurt someone, we feel their pain less than if we hurt them freely. It's one of the best known and also controversial experiments in psychology. In 1963, Stanley Milgram reported that when instructed, many people were surprisingly willing to deliver apparently dangerous electrical shocks to others. But some researchers, this along with a follow-up studies by the team, revealed how acting under orders can undermine our moral compass. Milgram's interpretation of the findings and the methods too have been criticised. However, the results have largely been replicated in experiments run in the US, Poland and elsewhere. And in 2016, a brain scanning study revealed that when we perform an act under coercion, this is freely, our brain processes it more like a passive action rather than a voluntary one. Now, a new study from a group that specialises in neuroscience of empathy takes this further. When we follow orders to hurt someone, they find there is reduced activity in our brain networks, in those our ability to feel another's pain. What's more, this leads us to perceive pain that we inflict as being less severe. This process could then help to explain the darker side of obedience. So this I think is a really, really interesting study because it really does highlight something that we didn't know before. Because previously it's been really strange, it's been really strange, the Milgram studies, because why the hell would people do this? And we used to just say obedience. But now I think this does cast that into question because obviously it's still mostly obedient. However, now this does cast into question that there could other be... There could be other factors in those, for example, our ability to feel pain, which this study suggests. So that's something that's really interesting. Moving on to something else I thought was really interesting this week. So, people don't often understand the psychology of confessions, and this could contribute to wrongful convictions. And this article I've actually um, put in my folder of various bits and bobs for the second edition of Forensic Psychology, which should be coming out next year 2022 i don't know yeah it's not really on my to-do list at the moment not all confessions are created equal in a criminal justice setting some admissions of guilt are both sincere and collaborated but others are not having been coerced given by vulnerable or underage defendants or unreliably reported second-handed yet mock juries have shown us that lay people often tend to take a confession at face value handing down a guilty verdict without considering other potential evidence. It's now this in our mind that the team behind a new study questioned just how well people really understand the existing body of evidence on reliable, admissible confessions. The answer to that question could have ramifications not only for those on juries, but for those who are deciding whether or not to convict. So this, I've always I've always loved the psychology of confessions, and that's why it takes up a massive section of forensic of my forensic psychology book simply because it's so important the psychology of juries especially as they have such a high importance in our daily lives well maybe not our daily lives but um, the daily lives of others right so we'll do one more black women with natural hair face biases from potential employers stories about discriminatory practices against black people with natural hairstyles afros twists deadlocks brains and corn Rose, I think that says, and I'm really glad that the British Psychological Society actually put that detail in because I didn't know what natural hair was. I thought hair was just hair. They've decided to classify it. Um, is about at schools having natural hair has led to detention, punishment, and even exclusions. And previous research has also found that serious stigma around natural hair when it comes to desirability and professionalism. Okay, so that I find really interesting because I promise that I will get onto the actual second paragraph in a minute but this shows that people think that black people have hair that isn't natural which i think is quite interesting even though that actually sounded a bit weird so a new study backs this up 
finding that such biases can tangentially affect black women's chances with potential employers. Black women with natural hairstyles have been seen as less competent and less professional than white female applicants or black applicants with straightened hair, and that will be less likely to get a job interviews too. So I think it's really interesting, and it does show that as a society, yes, and I know I always say this, we have come a long way, but it does show that there is a bit more to go. And when we face studies like this, I don't think, of, I know I'm not talking about the psychology here, but I think there's two ways we can look at this. We can either go, oh, God, this is just people being like nitpicky, life isn't fair, get over it. And then there's the other extreme, which is an oh, there's all doom and gloom, people are never going to be equal and everything. And to be honest, both of them are both extremes of the same coin because neither one's right. It's studies like this that should make us highlight that, well, let's try and fix this. Let's move a bit forward because we might not be able to get to true equality, but we can at least try and that's what counts. And even if we face this a bias, then that's one step closer to it. That's just something to think about. So that's the end of the psychology news section. Let's move on to the personal update. Moving on to the personal update. So this week's been really good actually because I've been doing quite a few bits. So as always, I'll start from the slightly less um, relevant stuff and I'll move on to the psychology bits. Then I'll move on to the content part of today's episode. So the slightly irrelevant bit first of all is that I finished doing Garo book so that's Garo Beacon of Hope which Beacon of Hope which I loved it was a great story and I'm really looking forward to releasing it and I'm also really looking forward to the last Garo book because that wraps everything up and I'm just so excited about it but I've also been plagued with the ideas of a new um, fantasy mystery series which I think should be amazing to write because in short it would follow an investigator um, of the local police but she's also um, a lady of a noble family so you've got the politics of high society that's going to be um, conflicting with her duties and then an inquisitor who has complete authority and the law doesn't apply to him comes in and tries to help her but then that goes a bit able and his lawlessness quite um really badly annoys her yes and then the idea for the um series would be to show their relationship grow and them two will become lovers in the end god knows how <laughs> and then it will also be like her family and how the um high society like affects her and then her brother who will definitely be gay because i've just got some really um funny moments and a few funny like plus ideas like with that and i think it'd be a really good series so i'm quite looking forward to writing that after the next gara book moving on to more relevant stuff um, which is actually psychology based is I've been doing these two online courses for the past two weeks and one of them's on reader expectations and that goes into what readers expect per genre. But but I'm doing a really interesting course on pacing in fiction, which the reason why I'm mentioning this is because it's actually all to do with the unconscious because you need to do a number of things in your writing fiction to basically trick the reader and to control how they think of, how they think of. For example, if you have a lot of quick one-line paragraphs then and that's going to make the reader read faster so that's not that surprising but here's the real psychology bit because you'll be doing these um, shorter lines and you're pacing your fiction faster the reader will be flicking the page quicker and that uh, and that subconsciously makes them feel like it's faster pace things are moving quicker so I thought it was really interesting and it's just this workshop or this online course I'm doing is definitely the most advanced one that I'm doing at least till next month and I'm doing a really um, advanced like a um, live online one but I thought was, I just think that the psychology of, of a fiction is actually like fascinating so I thought I'll just quickly mention that to you and another thing is that this week I've recorded two audiobooks so it's um yes and, <laughs> and, it, and if you've been listening to the podcast for a little while if you're on my email list then you will know how old these books are but i've now recorded the psychology of human relationships audiobook and i've also recorded the social cultural psychology second edition audiobook and they were released back in um february so that's some bad stuff on my part but yes I've recorded them and I've also edited them. So right now, the Psychology of Human Relationships 2nd Edition book should be available on all wide platforms, as I always say. So that's Google Play, Kobo, Nook, 
and you should be able to get it for free at your local library if you request it to request it so yes to like basically like the psychology of human relationship audiobook should be available on all major audiobook retailers except amazon and audible and something that and this isn't this sponsored products like um, section i just wanted to mention it for you know for like interest is that the thing that i really liked about this audiobook is that when i was like narrating i didn't actually know how personal i got it's still a lot more psychology than personal bits but i just thought it was so interesting that i shared that i shared so much you could pretty much tell so much about me from reading that book about my about my previous friendships oh but there's one more thing that i wanted to mention in addition to next week monday and tuesday i'll be doing some narrating so i will most probably do the clinical psychology audiobook because that's short and i can do it within two days two days but something else i really wanted to mention and this is the food for thought topic of today's podcast episode so today i had a driving lesson doing i'm not going to tell you how it went because my driving was fine the guy was no god anyway well anyway yeah but the really interesting thing i found was that because you have to wear um face masks or face coverings during lessons you add well you actually can't judge the other person's facial expression which in the guy's case he should not have seen my facial expression in quite a few bits but i couldn't see what his body language was so i only had to i only had his tone of voice to rely on to know what he was thinking and feeling so this i think is so interesting for social interaction because we rely a lot on a body language and i was thinking about was uh, because i was thinking about this, uh, this earlier as a culture we look at we focus a lot on the mouths and the mouth or we focus a lot on um, on the eyes i know that the western culture focuses on one and the eastern and eastern cultures focus on the other but anyway well anyway yeah, but because i hate to look at eyes and i hate eye contact i have to look at the mouth which i find quite difficult with, with these face masks and other and it's only just dawned on me basically because i can't tell what other people are thinking and feeling simply because i can't see them their mouths and their facial expressions so this i think is really really interesting to think about because if this becomes the new normal um, wearing masks with strangers then how can people basically gauge social interactions and this will add another layer of difficulties especially with people who find social interactions difficult anyway so that i think was some really good food for, um, food for thought this week and because that today's episode is about um resilience that today's episode has been sponsored by my the developmental psychology second edition so here's the blurb do you want to learn about child development do you want to know how a child uh, develops cognition language and more do you want an easy to understand and engaging guide to developmental psychology if the answer is yes to these questions then this is the book for you as in this book you'll learn about a wide range of topics of developmental psychology such as brain development the effects of social interaction and how culture impacts our development how co- how children learn language and much much more by the end of this book you will have a great understanding of a range of topics in developmental psychology all explained in an easy to understand way it's this book i really like because it does go into a lot of like great stuff such as well such as it introduces developmental psychology to you it actually talks about the perceived link between autism and the MMR vaccine. I'm really impressed I wasn't that judgmental in that chapter. And it also talks about brain development, attachment, its types and how people acquire it, peers and play, gender identity, cross-cultural development. So it really does go into a lot of depth for a lot of different topics. But all of this is done my usual fun, easy to understand way. So well, please check that out. The ebook is available on all major ebook platforms and the print book is available on amazon in large print and paperback and there is no audiobook version just yet and you can also get the ebook for free at your local library if you request it so that's it for the personal update let's move on to this content part of today's episode moving on to the content part of today's episode so today's episode is on how to build resilience so today's episode i thought was quite timely to be honest because We've all, because a lot of people are going back to school, are going back to work, and on the 28th, people are going back to university. At least that's the day that my university is going back. So I thought that this is quite time because we need to be able to show resilience for the struggles and the difficulties that we're going to have soon. Soon all people are already experiencing. And as always, I really hope that you and your families are safe wherever you are in the world. 
So resilience can be um, defined as the way how we deal with adversity. And this is our difficulties and this can range from loss of job to grief to sickness and any other struggles. So resilience is really important because we need to be able to develop strategies and ways to cope with the adversity and difficulties we face in the world. Now, this is the definition that I use in my um, developmental psychology book because a universal because a universal definition is very hard to come by because nobody quite agrees what it exactly is yes but in this episode we're going to be using the definition that i just mentioned but firstly before we go into this in more depth and this is quite a quick episode i always say that but i'm not sure if it's ever true is that well we all need to realize that our resilience isn't always down to us because sometimes it's down to our genetics for example our parents the way how their resilience can sometimes be inherited and also the way how our parents bring us up is also critical to resilience then you've also got external factors such as socioeconomic that always plays a part it seems in people's um, psychological makeup and there are other external influences that can influence our resilience so sadly our resilience is not always up to us However, resilience is about developing and creating ways to help us deal with the difficulties that we face in life. Because let's face it, sometimes we face really difficult challenges as humans. And it's our job that sometimes when we get knocked off our horse, as some people say, this has gone off on a slight tangent, it's very important that we are able to get back up and we can continue with life. Yes, and we can make ourselves stronger if we're quoting a Katy Perry song I think was what doesn't kill you makes you stronger <laughs> wow this is a weird episode so far so well, the entire point of today's episode is to actually go on to talk about different ways how we can build our psychological resilience so the first one is we need to nurture and invest in our social relationships because and we also need to be useful to others so the first thing I say is invest or actually no well, we actually need to create social relationships so we need to form social relationships with others and we need to nurture them so they become strong, integral and just great people that we can rely on for social support. So when we are faced with adversity, we can lean on others to support and they can help us back because we're useful to them and they want to be with us. And the cre- and the critical thing here is, is that these are real relationships that we value. And this is not some fake online relationship that, well, tons of people have these days. So the second one is don't be rigid. We all need to be flexible. And the actual thing from the article that I that actually sparked this idea is that it says that we need to bend, but we don't need to break. So and the key way how we do this is that we need to accept how we're feeling about a situation and we need to adapt. And the thing I used in the blog post because I write a blog post for these podcast episodes to get my um, thoughts out and then I record it. Well, I sort of record it, but sometimes the podcast episode and the um, blog post are two completely different things. Sometimes, well, they're loosely guided by each other. <laughs> yeah, but they're loosely guided by each other. That's at least what I like to say to myself. So the example that I used in the blog post was that if you've, uh, yeah, so like if you've gone for a job interview and you uh, didn't get it, you would be upset. That's perfectly normal. But you need to accept that you're feeling angry or sad. And then you can also adapt. So, for example, you work and go, right, I didn't get this job. so I will adapt by applying for more jobs and I will examine what I didn't do right and then I'll improve. And this links into the final tip. But the final tip to build psychological resilience is to take the problem, is to take the problem and apply problem solving action. This is critical because when we're faced with adversity and, and a difficulty, we need to be able to recover from it and make sure this does not happen to us again because we don't want to keep encountering the same difficulties because that's horrible and I feel really sorry for those people. So the critical thing here is is that you need to take a problem solving action. So if we take the problem that I just said about like the job interview and what happened was that well you can do that examination of what went wrong and how you can improve and that's problem solving. That's making sure that you improve in these areas of the job interview and you make sure that you don't suffer like that ever again. And you can improve and hopefully you will be a lot better in these job interviews. Yeah, so that's three tips for how you can improve your psychological resilience. I hope you found it useful. Please check out the the Elemental Psychology 2nd Edition paperback and large print are available at Amazon. 
Ebooks are available on all major ebook retailers and you can read it for free, or the ebook anyway, at your local library if you request it. Have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see the show notes, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. And if you want a free Ada book psychology box set, then please go to connorwhitesley.net. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.